Welcome back to the channel guys. So we have another tips and tricks video for you today. It's a little bit different. Um, I'm going to start by saying Fallout 76 can be a very complex game with many layers as many of you know. Um, because of this there are hundreds of tips I could give you. I've even done other tips videos but this video I want to address tips I wish I knew sooner. So things that I really wish I knew when I started playing the game. Things that could have got me further along in the game if I had actually adhered to this advice or knew these things in advance. The first tip I'm going to address may seem pretty obvious to most of you, but for me, it was not. And my biggest fear was I was going to die. And I'm here to tell you, it's okay for you to die. You will die a lot. Please do not let this discourage you from playing this game. It is a wonderful game, but you will feel like you're not able to play it. You can, you will get there, just trust me. But let's go over what happens when you die. I literally thought I would lose everything, all the guns I'd earned, all the peril I picked up, I thought I would lose it all. But actually the only thing you lose is the junk that you're carrying on your person. So my biggest tip to you is it's okay to die, but store your junk often. And for you guys that have been playing for a while, you may not know that Vault Steel that is bought at the Rusty Pick is also junk. So that means as soon as you buy it, you need to store it. Because otherwise, if you happen to die in between that time and when you actually store your junk, you will lose it forever because it's a non-tradable item. Therefore, when it's dropped, it, it gets destroyed. The other thing is, is when you die, a lot of times you don't actually die, but you get downed. And if other players are around, they will even try to revive you. Now, this doesn't happen every single time, and it's not anything that you per se have done wrong or you know that they are just ignoring you unless you've been dying a million times which can happen just don't get frustrated that people aren't getting you up but people can get you up and help you so that's a good thing to know the other thing is that there's tons of ways to prevent yourself from actually going all the way down and dying like perks armor buffs etc next thing I wish I knew sooner is there's a scoreboard guys where you can actually earn free stuff most of us start off the game just doing the story, but there's so much more than that. The scoreboard is something that can easily be overlooked, and the scoreboard is free, so take advantage. Plus, there are some very useful items there. This moves me right into the next item, and that is one of the easiest ways to actually complete the scoreboard, and that's by doing your daily and weekly challenges. Just so happens, I do a YouTube short daily to cover your daily challenges, so subscribe so you don't miss out. These challenges can actually be tracked by pressing Y. This makes it easy for you to see your challenges and it lets you know if you complete them or notifies you when you actually complete a task that counts towards completing that challenge. Mutations are available. I wish I had known sooner, but I did not. There are many ways to go about getting them and you need to know that they're not permanent. Mutations are pretty complex, so I've even made an entire video on it, so I'll link it down below. I just want you to know that they're available. The next one, go to events. Yes, go to lots of events. Even if it says that you should be level 40, level 50, do not listen to it, just go. I've already established it's okay to die. So store your junk. Now you can even do it at lots of the events, which is really nice. The new update, they put stash boxes at a lot of the big events. So you can actually do it at the event if you've forgotten. But if you do die at the event and you have forgotten to store your junk, if the event is actually going on at that time, you will not actually lose anything. You won't lose your junk, you won't drop anything, it's great. But if you were to die right as the event is ending or after the event has ended and you have a bunch of stuff, you can lose all that stuff. And with the loot all ability that we now have, it's a lot easier for people to accidentally pick up your stuff because they're looting the whole area. So just be aware of that and somebody's not actually trying to steal from you at this point. Events also offer unique rewards. Plus, you level up faster and you can discover new places. Here's a tip for an event. Go to Scorched Earth. It offers some unique rewards and it is a blast. One of the rewards it actually gives you is Stable Flux. Stable Flux is extremely hard to come by, especially in the early part of your game, and it's complicated to get. And you will need it to craft some items. So go to this event. Another reward from Scorched Earth is Repair Kits. Oh my god, I wish I knew about repair kits. 
Repair kits may be one of the best things in game. My preconceived notion about repair kits was twofold, so I had two different points of view that I looked at this and couldn't quite figure out what they did. So the first part is, is I thought, oh, you could repair your actual armor or weapons anywhere in game without having a workbench, but you had to have the jump. The other notion I had was, is that you use the repair kits at your workbench only, and that would replace your need to have the junk. Well, it does both literally does both you don't have to have the junk and you don't have to have a workbench it just does it on the fly in the field as you play so how do you take advantage of these repair kits you go in through your pit boy so in your pit boy you find your weapon that's broken or your armor that's broken and then you just highlight it and select it at this point push in the r stick and then push y to repair it it is done just like that just done and then you just need to re-equip your weapon and you're good to go. I would carry a bunch of weapons with me because my weapons were always breaking and I was afraid that I would miss out on the event because I didn't have a weapon to use. So that created a whole other set of problems. So use your repair kits guys, you got two different types. This leads me into the very next tip. Scrap kits. So scrap kits are found on your miscellaneous section of your pit boy and let me tell you a little bit about it. So have you ever been wandering around and just wished you could pick everything up that you saw and still be able to fast travel? Or have you ever been over in cucumbered or over encumbered as they say in the actual game and you still want to fast travel but you don't have any way to actually store your junk at the moment? Well, no need to fret because all you have to do is go into your miscellaneous section and push scrap kit. What the scrap kit does is it sends all your junk to your stash box if you have available space. Now if you're Fallout first, it sends all your junk to your scrap box. Items that cannot be broken down will be sent to your stash box whole, even if you have Fallout first, as long as you have available space. The next thing I wish I knew is about backpacks. Now you guys come out of the vault now with a backpack, but it's not as easy as all that. So there's a lot to know about backpacks. In fact, there's been dozens of videos made about it. I've even made a backpack plan video myself. So you can check that out if you want to. But the biggest thing I want you to know and take away from this is that the backpacks level up. So that means that you can carry more stuff if you level up your backpack. You just need to know the plan. So if you don't know the plan, you need to learn it. Watch the video that I put out, it should help you. The other thing is, is you can actually get a bigger backpack by getting a medium or standard backpack plan, which is earned through another quest, which is a whole nother reward. I just want you to actually know that these things exist and that you should level up your book bags. The next thing I wanna point out to people that are further along in the game is about the gold vendor at the wayward so once you're able to cash in your treasury notes for gold if you know you know you can actually go to the wayward at that point and actually spend caps for gold this happens once a week and he's available only after you've completed certain missions but there's a way to get gold if you don't have treasury notes legendary perks so there's legendary cards when you go into your loadout if you look at the very top of the screen you'll see a little blue line with two arrows pointing up that says legendary perks once selected it will take you to the legendary perk cards you can unlock six different slots and it's unlocked every 50 levels with the first one being unlocked at level 50 there are numerous perk cards that you can choose from including extending your special you can upgrade these legendary perks by using perk coins Perk coins can be earned from the scoreboard or by scrapping cards that you do not need. Each perk coin that is scrapped is worth two perk coins. The further you upgrade the card, the more perk coins you need for the next upgrade. The best thing about the legendary perks is that once the slots are unlocked, they are unlocked for all characters. You just need perk coins in order to select your cards. Were you aware you can share perks with teammates? You may have noticed while on a team, little rectangles with a number one or a number two, etc. next to a player's name, that actually means they're sharing a perk card with you. You have the ability to identify the share card by the chain link indicator on a perk card. 
In order for you to share perk cards, your charisma needs to be three times the worth of the card being shared. For instance, any card that's worth two requires six charisma points. It is not as simple as it looks. As you can see, I now have nine charisma. So I should be able to share a card that is worth three points. However, I cannot share this card. As it says, you need at least three points of charisma for each per point of the card to be shared, even though I have nine charisma. So if you go back out to your loadout, you will see that I only have four points of charisma. So that four points means that I can share one card. So it requires dedicated charisma in your loadout, not charisma from buffs or legendary perks. I'm getting the other charisma points for my legendary perks. Because of this, these points do not count towards my card sharing ability. So if I edit my charisma, I actually have nine special under charisma. I should now be able to share a card that's worth three points. And this is what it will look like when it's shared. You'll have a little circle with a group emblem next to it. Each time you change your loadout, you will have to reshare your card. If you're ever in a position that you do not like the perks being shared with you, you can actually disable all shared cards under settings, game, and choose reject incoming shared perks. The next item I wish I knew sooner was that you can actually name your weapons and armor. To name your weapons and armor, you just go to the weapon or armor that you're trying to name, highlight it, and then push the right stick in. Then you'll name it by pushing the select button, so at this point you can actually just choose whatever name you want. Since everything comes up in alphabetical order, people like to put a number or a Z before the name so it will be at the top or bottom of their list. Or you could just favorite the weapon. You can do this by highlighting the item that you want to favor and push right bumper. Now that it is marked as your favorite, whenever you go to actually sell, trade, or drop this item, it will say, are you sure you want to do this? Your favorite items can be easily accessed for fast selection on a wheel. By pushing up on the D-pad, the wheel will appear, and then you can quickly access your favorited items and can switch weapons, pop a lunchbox, or take a buff. You can edit your favorite list from this wheel as well as just by hitting the right bumper again. However, it will open up your entire inventory, so the easiest way is to just go in and find the item that you want to remove, hit the right bumper again, and it will remove your item. Hopefully, you'll be able to play better than I did, and these tips will help you out. Is there something I missed? Comment below to let me know and maybe it'll be included in the next video. Thank you guys so very much for watching. I really appreciate it. I'll see you in the next one.